Hey, welcome back. It's Thomas here. I just realized I've been sharing in this platform for a year and a half now, and this is my 70th video. Thank you for being here with me. There's a lot that I learned since starting my YouTube journey, and that's why I decided it's time to update some of my most valuable videos. I will do a full upgrade on both the graphic and the audio, plus I also want to give you a more updated number. So in today's remaster project, I will go over Canada's top free pension plan. CPP, Canada Pension Plan, OAS, OA Security, and GIS Guaranteed Income Supplements. I'll go over the details again and share how you can get up to $1,800 per month. Even if you know my old videos from the way back, I think you'll get a lot more value out of this one. But if you're new here, again, my name is Thomas, and this channel is to help Canadians to make better choices on retirement, wealth, and insurance. My goal is to make sure you can take one or two ideas home and start making better financial decisions today. So if you find this video valuable, make sure you click the subscribe button below. Let's get started. Canada Pension Plan, known as the CPP, was designed back in the 1965 with the goal to provide Canadians with 25% of their retirement income. But since our living standard has grown and evolved, the government has actually enhanced the CPP. They aim to provide with one-third of your retirement income. The good and the bad side about the CPP is that it is a mandatory plan, meaning that everyone who is 18 years or older and employed will need to contribute into their CPP. Right now, in 2021, the maximum CPP benefit you can receive at age 65 is $1,203. But the truth is, not a lot of people will get that. So the average CPP amount that Canadians get is around $690 a month. To qualify and start receiving the CPP payment, you must be at least 60 years old and have made at least one valid contribution to the CPP. The amount you get is based on the average earnings throughout your work life, your contribution, and your age. What some people don't like about the CPP is that the money is automatically taken from their paycheck. If you're a person who is good at saving their own money, it can be a bit of a drawback. But since the CPP isn't guaranteed income, it makes sense to maximize it as much as possible. So how can you do that? To maximize your CPP benefits, let's first get a deeper understanding of how the CPP works. There are three parties involved. One, the employee contributes up to 5.25% of the salary after the first 3500 And second, there's the employer's side who will match it for another 5.25%. And lastly, we have the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board, which will invest the money accordingly. According to a recent report, the fund plus the return can still sustain the plan for the next 75 years. So let's say if you make $3,500 or less a year, both you and your employer don't have to pay into the CPP that year. This is also called the basic annual amount. Another number you need to know is the yearly maximum pensionable earnings. This number gets updated every year, and in 2021, the YLPE is at $61,600. Therefore, as long as you make anything between $3,500 and $61,600, both you and your employer have to pay into your CPP. That being said, if you are self-employed, you have to pay both the employee and the employer portion into the CPP. Let's look at an example. Tom is self-employed and he's making $50,000 per year. $50,000 minus the first $3,500 is $46,500. He needs to pay both portion in CPP, which is 10.5%, so he needs to contribute $4,882 for his CPP. The maximum CPP contribution per year is up to $57,96. But starting in 2020, that's a Tier 2 contribution for high-income earners. They can contribute more on top of the normal CPP so they can get a higher retirement benefits. There are ways to maximize your CPP benefits. First is the contribution length. Between the age of 18 and 65, only 39 out of the 47 years will count towards to the CPP calculation. And that's because the investment board will automatically exclude the 8 years of your life where you earn the least amount. The government does this because they recognize that you will have less income in some years, so they give you a bit of break. What's more, if you're a mother, you get 7 years off CPP after you got a baby. 
So to get the maximum, you have to max out the contribution limit for 39 years. Another thing to consider is the age you start getting your CPP benefits. The standard age is 65, but you can start as early as age 60 or as late as age 70. The age you start has an effect on your benefits. If you start at age 60, your monthly payouts will be lower. If you start at age 70, it will be higher. Here's an example. If Tom's CPP benefits $1,000 per month at age 65, he decides to withdraw CPP at age 60 instead. The amount he gets will be 36% lower. So in his case, it will be $640 per month. And if he decides to get it later at 70, then he gets $1,420 per month, which is 42% more. So the question is, should Tom take it at age 60, 65, or age 70? Yes, you get less payout at the age of 60, but you get 5 years earlier. But if you take it out later, you will get a more guaranteed return. The bottom line is whether you should take out the money early or wait until age 70 depends on your unique situation. If you are unsure when you should get your CBP, time to ask yourself, are you being healthy? What is your current financial situation? And what's your plan for retirement? For example, if you're healthy and expect to live a long life or have access to other sources of income, you might choose to start receiving your CPP retirement pension later. And you prefer to work less or you want the money now to pay off debts or to fund your retirement plans, you might choose to start receiving your pension before the age of 65. Unlike the CPP, OA Security or OAS for short does not require your contribution. Instead, the benefits are funded by the Canadian government and the earliest to receive OAS benefits is at age 65. In 2021, the maximum OAS you get is $618 regardless if you're married or not. The amount goes up a bit every year due to inflation. But keep in mind there are a couple requirements to receive the benefits. First, you have to be a Canadian citizen or permanent resident and live in Canada for more than 10 years between the age of 18 and 65. In order to get the full amounts, you need to live in Canada for 40 years. You can estimate how much OAS you get by taking the number of years to live in Canada and dividing by 40. Then multiply that number by the maximum OAS amount possible that year. For example, if you live in Canada for 10 years, 10 out of 40 is 25%, so you will get 25% of the $618, which is about $154 a month. Nowadays, the benefit is quite straightforward. It's an automatic enrollment as long as you file your tax on time. Usually, it starts at age 65, but same as CBP, you can wait until the age of 70. And if you wait, your OAS payment goes 0.6% more each year. There's one thing that can lower your OAS benefits though. If your income is higher than $79,000, the government will start reducing the OAS benefit by 15%. And if you have a net income of $128,000 or more, your OAS is fully called back and reduced to zero. Keep this in mind, especially if you get your OAS at age 65 while you're still working. It can create scenarios where you earn too much and your OAS is called back. You might think, that number seems high. Who makes $120,000 in their retirement? But don't forget, CPP, pension plan from your work, RRSP, and interest generated from the investments are all considered taxable income. And that's why the best retirement strategy is to plan way early before you actually retire. The strategy is to melt down your RRSP and pension plan so it doesn't affect your OAS benefits. And you can have a chat with me using the link below. The last benefit is GIS, the Guaranteed Income Supplement. It's designed to provide minimum support to people who have extremely low income. There are two requirements to receive the GIS. One, you must first qualify for the OAS. And two, your net annual income must be lower than $18,600 assuming you're single. The closer your income gets to zero, the higher the GIS you receive. The maximum GIS benefits per month are $916, meaning you get this if you have no income at all. If we combine both the GIS and OAS together, you can possibly get roughly around $1,529, and the GIS portion is tax-free. 
but keep in mind, not a lot of Canadians can get the full amount of the GIS. Pretty much all income except the OAS will affect the GIS benefits. Pretty much there are only two types of people to qualify for the full amount. Neither you are dead broke, or you're super rich enough to hire a team of accountants to help you with the tax planning. Now the key question is, can you really retire if you're solely dependent on the government benefits? Or how much do we need to live okay during retirement? Statistic Canada reports an average Canadian household spends $800 on food, $1,600 on housing, $300 on clothing, $1,000 on transportation, $300 on healthcare, another $300 on recreation, and lastly, another $300 on other stuff. And that's around $4,600 per month for an average Canadian family to maintain their lifestyle. If the average CPP plus the OAS benefits are around $1,300 for one person, and if both couple are retired, which means $2,600 bring to the table, that means we still need another $1,000 after tax money extra per person per month. So where do these $1,000 come from? And the answer comes from savings and investment that you plan now. Let's have a look at how much money you need to save. We'll use rules of 4% to see how much we need to live comfortably during retirement. We'll divide the difference by 4% which gives us 300,000. So if you want to be more conservative, times that amount by 1.2. This should give us a good buffer room. If we have this money in the bank account, with an average of 4% return per year, it should produce $1,000 cash flow per month. Can you see why the government urged us to prepare for retirement early? It's because most people can't live with the government benefits alone. To set up your retirement rights, use tax shelter accounts like tax-free saving or RRSP. The reality is a lot of people think retirement planning is important, but it's not urgent to them. Study shows that life expectancy is going up, yet fewer and fewer people are contributing to their retirement plans. It's never about how much you put in, it's about how early and how consistent you want to do it. Here are a couple of tips on how you can build up your retirement fund. First, understand your current spending today and estimate what's likely to be during retirement. Next is to put your savings into a plan that works for you on autopilot. It takes less time and effort, and all you need to do is review it from time to time and adjust along the way. I know there's no one-size-fits-all solution. Everyone has their own definition of retirement life, but we should and need to do better in taking control of our financial situations. Our government do help us in covering some of the basic costs during retirement, but to live the retirement you envision, it requires some planning. Alright, let me know if you like this remastered version. And of course, if you found this video useful, be sure to click the subscribe button and turn on the notification to get more videos that help you maximizing your finance. This is Thomas, and I will see you in the next video.